Okay, everybody. It is uh, Sunday, October 20th, 2019. This is my newest segment of Markets A Look Ahead. This particular video, I want to step back here and outline what's happening and what is uh, just getting started with regard to the action of governments around the world and world central banks. Um, this should put a clear perspective on not just what you should be doing to counteract this, but what you can expect. It's that simple. Look, we know the playbook. Um, it, there's no reason to speculate. There's no reason to guess. Uh, it's as simple as that. So let's let's back up to several months ago. Several months ago, I explained to you, and I put it in these terms. I said that world central banks were about to go nuclear. Shortly after I put out that video, I mean within within like weeks, we started to see world central banks uh, begin yet a new phase uh, of money printing, uh, uh, buying all kinds of debt, rigging the debt market. The Federal Reserve has absolutely followed suit with this new round of QE, recapitalizing the banks, the repo scam, everything that's happening right now. But as I have explained to you, uh, for a while now, you haven't seen anything yet. Nothing, and I mean zero. We are now going to enter yet another phase here. Um, what do I allude to? Central banks um, around the world are, are literally very close to their end game. Their end game is very simple. You know what it is if you've been following this blog. Their goal collectively is to become the lenders and buyers of last resort. This, the banks that run these organizations, they have one goal and one goal, period, the end. That is to own everything. That's the goal of banks. Um, they want to own everything. They want to create slaves. Slaves to them. We don't... Look, this world is not governed by presidents, kings, queens, monarchs, dictators. It's governed and ruled by central banks. Let me back up a moment here so maybe we can gain a better perspective on this and, and how I can prove this to you uh, even more clearly. I am really not sure how many of you honestly know history. You're not allowed to know history. History is, the stuff that you're taught, it's all taught in school, it's all fake. It's all fabricated. None of it's real. Um, and going back to just the monetary system, all right, let, let's, 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 Let's back up to 1971 real quick, when Nixon took us off of the gold standard. Actually, let's back up before that. Let's back up before that to 1944. I may be off on that. The, the Bretton Woods Agreement. What was that? That was when the United States dollar became the world's reserve currency. And via this agreement, other world currencies... Um, were linked to the dollar and promised to keep a specific exchange rate. Okay, it's pretty simple. Um, so that was phase, I don't know what phase that was, uh, to get the dollar as the world reserve currency, which at the time was backed by gold. Okay, get everyone to jump on the bandwagon, agree, US dollar, okay, it's king, uh, and everyone was going to peg their currency in one way or the other to the dollar. Very simple, very simple. Okay. Then in 1971, when in order to fund uh, the Vietnam War, which was the next phase to establish the petrodollar, okay, uh, Nixon took us off of the gold standard. When he did that, let, let's think about it. When Nixon took us off of the gold standard, what what did that do? That converted every single uh, currency around the world into a fiat currency. You understand? If the dollar now is not backed by gold and everyone is pegged to the dollar, well, what does that do? It instantaneously converted the world into a fiat monetary system, vaulted 
uh, world central banks into debt machines, creating legions of slaves. So, if we recall how this thing played out, when Nixon said he was going to temporarily uh, remove the U.S. dollar from a gold standard to save us from the speculators, who were the speculators he was referring to? Uh, I, I think you get it at this point, but I'm going to outline it for you here. It was the other uh, governments around the world who said, hold on. The United States is reckless. They don't have all this gold. They're just printing cash out of thin air. Uh, so we're going to back off. So they started cashing in their currency for gold. Uh, and then Nixon said, no, no, no. We're not going to allow this to happen. We're going to remove the dollar from the gold standard. This is how they had gotten a stranglehold uh, on the peoples of the world via this mechanism. It's so evil, so twisted, and so dastardly. And it's done right in people's faces, but they just let it go. No revolt, no uproar, just like we're seeing now with what the Federal Reserve is doing. Not a peep from a single uh, Democratic hopeful, not a peep from the president about what's going on. Again, the two heads of the same hideous snake. And uh, I think you should be well aware of that, at least if you follow this blog. Then, of course, came the Vietnam War, uh, which was uh, simply to establish the the uh, extension of the fiat monetary system, the petrodollar, um, and, and the rest is history. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, but, again, this, what I've explained to you is a multi-decade plan. I mean, going back to what, 1944? Uh, it's not going to end here. Um, there is no way on this planet Earth that um, central banks who run everything, they govern the world, are going to allow a gold standard again. So for all of you that are still stuck in the delusional paradigm that, uh, that it is going to change because President Trump is going to do it, uh, you've got to snap out of it. No one person is that powerful. No one person is that strong. No one person runs anything. It's all run by the banks. The banks rule, you lose. Now, with that said, I know this has been kind of long, a little history lesson here, but it's going to put a perspective on what we're about to see. What we're about to see here, again, we've just seen the opening salvos of what the Federal Reserve is doing. And this is about to go hyper-nuclear hyper-nuclear, and it's not just the Fed. Understand, now that the Fed has jumped on the bandwagon, lagging slightly behind other world central banks that have uh, gone nuclear as well, they're going to follow suit. So the next phase is, again, currency devaluation further to a much larger degree. You know, let's talk about that real quick. People make me laugh. Let me explain to you why they make me laugh. Um, Let's go through history again real quick. Uh, in the 19, let's say, let's say 50s, 60s, um, it took one income. A regular guy or a regular girl was able to support their family on one income. At that time, it was mostly men in the workforce. Um, the women stayed home. They took care of the house. They took care of the kids. Um, on, on, you know, people were able to do this with, a, you know, a regular job. Now. What happened as we move forward, as the as the currency devaluation accelerated um, through the the seventies, we started to see this change. We started to see. Hold on a minute now. It's now taking two incomes to support the same household. Why? Why do you think that happened? Maybe because the currency is being devalued. Um, again, central banks were setting up their scheme. Uh, in the 80s, absolutely. Two incomes were required and people started to require massive amounts of debt just to make ends meet. Today, two incomes for the most part are required and the middle class no longer exists because they, are bo they have borrowed beyond their eyeballs uh, just to make ends meet. People, again, today, are, are just to make ends meet, are borrowing from their credit cards in, in rates that have never been seen before. You think this is going to stop? Absolutely not. Especially with the next phase, which is coming up. Massive currency devaluation, much more stimulus uh, from world central banks to keep this entire scam and charade propped up. So we are already in, in, in hyperinflation. 
Um, and the, the proof should be, again, you used to take one income, now it takes two. Not only does it take two incomes to support a household, but people are borrowing beyond their eyeballs. This is hyperinflation, okay? So when people say, that, you hear the, the idiot imbeciles who even post, Oh, Greg, you've been saying this for years and nothing is happening. That's because they're fixated on the stock market, near all-time record highs, and they believe the lies, the propaganda, and the rhetoric that, this is great. Our economy is booming. Meanwhile, the middle class being systematically eliminated. If you back up, and like I said in the beginning of this video, and you look at the big picture, it's not that hard. But again, it's the boiling fraud. We have one over 1 billion people on this earth. If you just include the population of the United States and Europe right now who are in the pot, they're in the pot of boiling frogs. They are boiling frogs. They watch what's happening in front of their face and they think everything is fine because it's happening slowly over a multiple decade. Uh, it's, it's a multi-decade plan that is literally about to reach its peak. Now, what does this mean for you moving forward? If we understand that right now, world central banks, all of them, they're all doing the same thing synchronized. Uh, buying everything across the board, printing cash out of thin air, more, adding debt to a digital screen. Let me ask you this real quick while we're on the topic. So we understand that um, the debt, the, let's just stick to the United States, the national debt keeps getting greater and greater, can't be paid back. Um, how do you stop it? You can't stop it. You understand? It's the debt-based economic model. What happens is the government needs to go to the Federal Reserve, who... Um, again, it runs the entire show via the banks, the Wall Street banks, and they have to borrow more money to pay the debt. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme on an unprecedented scale. How do all Ponzi schemes end? Maybe you should consider that. Um, there is no difference between what's going on now between the Federal Reserve, which is no, federal, no more federal than Federal Express. Private entities run the Federal Reserve. As a matter of fact, it's only six Wall Street banks that run the Fed. We are slaves to them. This is why we are the largest debtor nation in the world, the United States. Why? Our population uh, here in the United States, most people have a negative net worth. It's pathetic and it's about to get much worse. If you are one of those people here who have a negative net worth, if you take what you own and figure out what you owe. If you have a negative net worth, you cannot imagine the trouble that you're in moving forward here. You need to do whatever you possibly can to turn that around um, because this is about to get much, much worse for you moving forward. Look, uh, I could go on and on for hours on this entire thing, but I think I've covered enough in this video. It's, I think it's important. Um, you know, it's markets looking ahead. Well, what do we think is going to happen here? Uh, more, more cash printed out of thin air, uh, the dollar devaluation. This is stock market positive. You got um, crude oil hovering around $53, $54 a barrel, mark my words. Something will occur to prop that up. It'll pu push or pull the entire energy sector with it. It will pull the financial sector with it as well. Uh, I am not saying stocks are not going to waver, but the, but the game is risk on. It remains risk on here. But gauging from what I've said in this video, where do you think you should be? You think you should still be in the dollar in this environment or another fiat currency? Do you think maybe you should be looking for dollar alternatives in this, in this environment? Do you think maybe you should do whatever you can to get out of being a negative net worth person, a debt slave? What do you think? Am I, do I have this right or do I have this totally wrong? Do people need to be playing the game, um, getting themselves deeper into debt, being stuck in a fiat currency backed by bankrupt governments? I mean, explain this to me. Uh, tell me where Greg Manorino has gotten this wrong. Or has, have I yet again uh, put out a video where everything I've said, everything I've said, uh, is true? Please, for those of you that are probably going to give this video a thumbs down, <laughs> where did I get it wrong? All right, with that said, please share this video. Get it out there. I'll see you in the morning, pre-market. 
I've made a lot of changes to my website, by the way. Um, go check it out. I now put a uh, cryptocurrency uh, stat little chart there for you. You can see all the cryptocurrencies uh, as well. And I also put gold and silver there, left-hand side of my website, tradestrades.net. Check it out. Let me know what you think. I'm out of here. Love all of you. Bye.